Hi, hello, how are you? Craig Chapman here and just a short little demo today. Uh, I am preparing a Microsoft SQL database and so I decided to download a little sample data and I needed to get the sample data into the database. Now the sample comes in the form of a CSV. So I downloaded this from a uh, Forex exchange website. This is historical uh, foreign exchange data and I'm looking at the British pound versus the US dollar. If I open up the CSV file, we can see that I have a date column, a time column, and although there are no column headers here, I'm gonna take a guess, so a semi-educated guess, that this is the buy price, the sell price, the high value for this minute, and the low value for the minute. Uh, and I'm not sure what this column here is, it seems to always be zero, so I'm not going to worry about that one but I want to import this data into a SQL database. And it occurred to me that many years ago, I'd worked with a component in the JEDI set that could help with this. So JEDI is a set of uh, API bindings and com visual components that you can add into your IDE. So if you come into the Get It Package Manager here, uh, and I'm gonna type JEDI into the search bar and let that filter, you'll see that we have the Jedi Code Library and the Jed Jedi Visual Component Library. Well, you have to install both of these uh, if you want to use the visual components. So I just go ahead and click on Install to install this, and I now have the Jedi components in my IDE. So we'll go ahead and start a new application. Now the Jedi components are VCL extensions, so this has to be a VCL application. And the first thing I want to do is connect this up to my database. So I'm gonna get myself a FireDAC connection, and I'll go into the connection wizard here and I'm going to select the uh, Microsoft SQL driver MS SQL and then I need to tell it which database well I have prepared a database the database I've prepared is called GBP USD and within that I have a table TBL underscore GBP USD and I've created the fields here that I need for importing the data the buy sell high low values and the timestamp. Now the timestamp, I'm not actually using a timestamp field just because for this simple demo, I don't want to deal with converting uh, strings to dates and date time formats and that kind of stuff. But effectively, uh, this varchar field, the string field is going to be the timestamp. So I'm gonna do a select star from this table. And here it is. And I have zero rows of data in here. So let's go ahead and import some data. The database is GBP USD. The username, I'm using Windows Authentication, so that's my machine name, Cerberus, because I have multiple heads on this machine, uh, and my username, Craig. Uh, I'll come back to the password in a moment. I'm gonna set this for OS Authentication, and then I'm gonna set the server as Cerberus. Now. If you'll forgive me, I'm going to move this dialog off the recording just while I put in my desktop password and test the connection. And we have connection established successfully. Okay, so my FireDAC connection is now connected to the database. I'm going to set the connected property to true and actually I'm going to turn off this login prompt right here. So I have a connection to the database and now I want to look at the table. So I'm going to grab a TFD table, that's a FireDAC table. It's automatically bound to this connection because it's the only one on the form. So all I need to do is come down to the table name uh, property here and select my TBL uh, GBP USD table. So now that I have that table connected, I'll set the active property to true. And now we need to start looking at how we get data into this table. Well, I'm going to do that by looking up the JV CSV component. So this is a TJV CSV data set. I'll drop that on my form. And I want to load in my data. So the first thing I need to do is find the file name property. And I'm gonna go browse. I have this data on my desktop. So my CSV is included in. Now I know the CSV doesn't have a header row. We looked at the data and it doesn't have a header row, so I'll turn that off. And then I'm going to look at some of these other properties. I'm gonna make this read only just so that we can't accidentally damage the data. Uh, and we want to look at the field definitions. So I'm going to come into the field definitions and again, looking at the data in Excel, let me get this open here. So 
So the first column is the date, the second is the time, and then we have our buy, sell, high, low. So let's go ahead and put those columns in. So my first column is going to be date, and that's a string. Time, I'm gonna leave that as a string. Uh, then I'm gonna go for floats, buy, sell, high, and low. Okay, so I now have effectively a data set here. If I set this to active, it seems to be working. So I have a data set which has my high sell, um, buy, sell, high, low values and the date time columns as well. So now what we want is a button to make something happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into the button handler and I'm going to make sure that the FD connection one dot connected is true and that the FD table active is true. So just making sure that at runtime those are set. Now that should give us access to the uh, SQL database. That's my FD table. Uh, and you know what? Let's go ahead and name these just to make things a little easier. So we'll call this tbl sql and we'll call this one tbl csv okay so tbl sql dot active is true let's also do tbl csv active to true just to make sure and then we want to set both of these to the beginning of the table, or at least the table CSV that we're importing from. So we'll do table CSV first to go to the first record. And then we'll open up a while loop while TBL CSV dot EOF is end of file. So we'll do while not end of file begin to make sure we don't miss it. TBL CSV dot next. I can't type today. CSV dot la, uh, next, sorry. So that it goes to the next record. And then what we're going to do is open up the SQL table for editing. So we'll do TBL SQL dot and we'll do insert. So we're going to insert a record. And once we're done with that, we'll do TBL SQL dot. Um, I think it's post to post the changes. Yep, okay. And so now we just need to set the fields in the insert record that we're creating. So that's going to be tbl sql dot field by name, and we'll have date. Uh, actually, the uh, ts because it's a uh, timestamp. Uh, although I've so just looking back at the table here, I've called it ts for timestamp, even though it's a string. So it's going to have the date and time. Okay, so we're going to have the TS field here, and we'll say as string is, and then we're going to go to TBL CSV dot field by name, and we're going to grab out the date field as string, and I'm going to take a copy of that because we're going to reuse part of it, and we'll add a space and put the time field in. So basically we're adding the date and time fields together from the CSV file and putting those in the TS field on the SQL database. Then we'll do TBL SQL field by name. We'll do the buy price first as float is TBL CSV field by name uh, by value as float and I won't make you watch me as I edit the other four fields in but we'll do sell high and low okay so I think that's all we should need let's go ahead and try running this so I'll go ahead and click on my button and I can see a little egg timer there and it's done so let's go and take a look now in my database, hit execute, and we have data. So just a, a short little routine there to use the Jedi CSV component 
to import CSV data into our SQL database. My name is Craig Chapman and thanks for watching.